Today's lesson is two surprising ways to predict the weather. Hi, everybody. I'm Roger, and I'm Mike. And of course, sometimes living in Taiwan, we've got unpredictable weather. We never know if a typhoon is coming, or if it's going to rain a lot, or if it's going to be really hot. So we're always looking for new ways to predict the weather or to forecast the weather. But today we're going to give you some surprising ways to predict the weather. No, it's not like、uh, with the folk methods where they watch the behavior of farm animals or something to determine whether it's going to rain or not. These are other kinds of. Methods that might be scientific, and、uh, of course, it has to do with the contrails and smokestacks. Very, very interesting. I knew that one about the cows, right? If the cows are lying down in the field, it means it's going to rain. Is that the one? Possibly,、I'm、I've heard、sure uh, different、true. ones. It kind of may depend on where you are. Yeah, and I remember driving by fields of cows, and half of them are lying down, and half of them are standing. So, what does that mean? And of course, these days, most of us have access to weather reports on our smartphone, which is in our hand. Or In our pocket, but yeah, these are interesting things that you can do. Just ways of observing nature, observing the signs around you, the indicators around you, to give you a little bit of a head start on what the weather might be doing. So let's find out some surprising ways to predict the weather, too, to be precise. And we'll check out the first part of our article. Two surprising ways to predict the weather. Don't have access to a weather report. You won't need one if you learn about the relatively unknown but simple methods of using airplanes and smokestacks to anticipate weather changes. Hello, everyone. First, we'll look at the first part of the word "access." It means to access something or to use something to get close to someone or get someone's attention. For example, access to the swimming pool is limited to club members and their guests. 游泳池的使用权仅限俱乐部会员以及他们的宾客使用。又或者说 ，Here is the key that will give you access to my apartment while I'm away. 当我不在家时，你可以用这把钥匙进入我的公寓。接着看到动词 anticipate， 指的是预期、预计或是预料。例如 ，The owner did not anticipate such a large turnout for his store's grand opening. 老板没料到他的店盛大开幕会有这么多人来。或者。Leandra anticipated that Johnny would forget his lunch, packing an extra one just in case. Leandra 预料 Johnny 会忘记带午餐，所以多装一份以防万一。Okay, so our article begins with a question: Don't have access to a weather report? That might be kind of surprising because everybody carries around a smartphone, and on the home screen there, there's always a little indication of what the weather is going to be. If you want to have more details, you just tap on that, and it shows you like the next ten day forecast or whatever. But for whatever reason, you might not have access to a weather report, and you need to figure out how to predict the weather using a different method. So here. Access means you can get to something, you can use it. Do you have access to a weather report? Oftentimes, of course, when we travel, we want to have access to Wi-Fi. We want to have access to the internet in order to get that kind of information. But yeah, what if you've lost your smartphone、mm. and you don't have access to a weather report, and you want to know if it's going to rain or not when you're planning to go hiking in the mountains? That's a very good point. Well, you won't need one if you learn about the relatively unknown but simple. Methods of using airplanes and smokestacks to anticipate weather changes. So those are the two surprising ways we're going to be using airplanes and smokestacks. Smokestacks are those long, tall chimney structures that are built around factories, especially, and you know anything that they burn in the factory to produce energy, for example, or a power station. The smoke, the pollution will come out of the top of the smokestack. Most of us won't really notice them unless it's producing a lot of pollution. Pollution, then we might be a little worried about it. But the smokestacks, of course, are going to have the smoke that's blown by the wind as it's released. So by having a keen eye and observing carefully, you might be able to anticipate weather changes. To anticipate something is to sort of know something is going to happen. To expect something is going to happen. To have signs and an awareness and clues that something is going to happen. If someone, for example, says, "I'll call you at noon," then around 11:45. You might turn down the music, or take out your headphones, or 
stop using noisy machines in your apartment. Don't take a shower if you anticipate a phone call coming in. You're expecting it to come in. This is what you think will happen. So airplanes and smokestacks can help us to anticipate, to expect, and to know about things that are coming to come along in the future. In this case, weather changes. Let's find out how in part two of the article. When airplanes fly, they sometimes leave behind a trail of artificial clouds called contrails. In general, when a plane leaves no contrails or the contrails quickly fade, the atmosphere contains low levels of moisture and good weather is likely ahead. In contrast, when contrails remain in the sky for a long time, that suggests the presence of lots of moisture and that cloudy weather may be coming. Water vapor from smokestacks acts in similar ways. When it rises but then quickly disappears, it's an indication of a dry atmosphere and clear skies. When it rises and continues rising, it indicates high humidity and the clouds will form. However, when it rises but flattens at the top, it means that the air above is too warm to let moisture rise. This usually implies that you're in for clear skies. Humidity. The temperature wasn't very high today, but the humidity made it feel much hotter. The child flattened the piece of clay with his hands and then shaped it into a bowl. The girl's bicycle was flattened by a truck. Somebody be in for something. Andy knew he would be in for his mother's wrath if she saw the messy house, so he did the chores before she got home. Andy Herbert is in for a shock when he sees his exam grade. Herbert Okay, let's talk about part two. Oh boy, it's quite long, so listen carefully. We're going to talk about how you can predict the weather by using airplanes and smokestacks. And we'll start by talking about airplanes or jets. It might depend on uh, what uh, particular kind of craft it is. I would imagine it would be a jet. I don't uh, recall mm. airplanes with propellers leaving contrails, but we'll get to that later. When airplanes fly, they sometimes leave behind a trail of artificial clouds called contrails. So you've probably noticed this a lot of times. I think Taiwan is on the direct flight path between Japan and Thailand or Hong Kong or places like that. So lots of jets are flying over Taiwan and they leave behind this trail of artificial clouds. You've probably all seen them. They're just this long line of thin white clouds and they're artificial, which means they don't occur naturally. They are caused by human beings, by people. Absolutely. Moisture in the atmosphere. In general, it says when a plane leaves no contrails or the contrails quickly fade, the atmosphere contains low levels of moisture and good weather is likely ahead. So there you go. So in general, of course, there's always exceptions. Nature has a lot of exceptions. Nothing is hard and fast. It's not either yes or no. Often we do find that things are a little bit different depending on the situation. But in general, most of the time when a plane leaves no contrails or the contrails quickly fade, so you hear the jet, you look up, you can see the jet maybe streaking across the sky up there, but you don't see the contrails, or it has contrails, but they quickly disappear, they quickly fade. What does this mean? It means the atmosphere, in other words, the air up there, especially quite high above the ground, contains low levels of moisture, and good weather is likely ahead. So it means it's quite dry, you won't see a lot of clouds, and you won't be expecting a lot of rain, because the atmosphere, the air is quite dry, so that means good weather is likely ahead. You're not expecting rain rain clouds and rainstorms anytime in the future. And what about the opposite? 
Well, in contrast,、uh, we use this to talk about something that is the opposite of something else. So, in contrast to contrails that don't exist or they quickly fade, in contrast to that, when contrails remain in the sky for a long time, that suggests the presence of lots of moisture and that cloudy weather may be coming. So, remember, the contrails may remain in the sky for a long time. And if you see that, it might mean that there's a lot of moisture in the air. Well, there probably is a lot of moisture in the air, but that may mean that cloudy weather is coming. And we should mention that、uh, contrail is actually short for condensation trail. Condensation occurs when moisture is pulled out of the air, like the morning dew is an example of condensation. When the weather is lower in the morning, sometimes you see water on plants and things like that. Even Even though it hasn't rained, that's condensation. So again, these are condensation trails, and there might be a lot of moisture in the air if you see that contrail for a long time, and therefore that could mean that cloudy weather could be coming. And if you have cloudy weather, that means it might rain or there might be a tornado. But I don't think it will predict an earthquake. No, definitely not predicting an earthquake. And what about the smokestacks? Well, water vapor from smokestacks acts in In similar ways, so these are different places that you would be looking for them. But the science is basically the same. So water vapor from smokestacks. Often, when we burn things, there might be water vapor in there, or the water vapor gets picked up from the atmosphere. Vapor is basically steam. When we have tiny, tiny particles of water or liquid in the air, we call that vapor. Once you have enough vapor, it will form into a drop, and then that will, of course, fall as rain. But clouds are basically Bunches of water vapor floating around up there in the atmosphere. So water vapor from smokestacks acts in similar ways. It's working in the same basic way. The science, the methodology, what is going on is basically the same. When it rises, when this water vapor rises along with anything else coming out of the smokestack, but then quickly disappears. It's an indication of a dry atmosphere and clear skies. So the water evaporates very quickly, and of course, then the smoke that you see, the steam that you see, it disappears as well. So this is an indication. An indication is a sign of something. A fever might be an indication that you're sick or something like that. Or if you wake up and、uh, you see a lot of clouds in the sky, that's an indication that later that day it might start to rain, especially if they're gray clouds. So you might be. Wise to bring an umbrella with you. It doesn't guarantee it's going to happen, but it's a good sign. It's a good bit of evidence that something is happening. So it's an indication of a dry atmosphere and clear skies. Right. So if you are lucky enough to live near some factories, yeah, pay attention to those smokestacks and see how long the vapor stays in the air. So again, when that vapor rises and quickly disappears, it will indicate. That the atmosphere is dry and that there are clear skies, or perhaps there are going to be clear skies. And when it rises and continues rising, it indicates high humidity and that clouds will form. So here, humidity is similar in meaning to moisture. That just means the presence of water in a certain place, usually in the atmosphere. We oftentimes think of Taiwan as being. High humidity or having high humidity, and of course other places are dry. So you know when I first came to Taiwan, I came from the United States, especially from California, where it's very dry there. And when I arrived in Taiwan, oh boy, this place. Is humid. It's got high humidity. It did take quite a long time to get used to. Absolutely, usually measured as a percentage of moisture, or in some ways, water vapor in the air. However, when it rises but flattens at the top, it means that the air above is too warm to let moisture rise. That's very interesting. So, air temperature can be a sort of different levels, different layers of it. Of course, as you go away from the Earth's surface, where a lot of the heat is stored, the Air will get cooler and cooler as you rise. You might have noticed that on an airplane, when you're flying up at the maximum height, up around thirty thousand feet, the air up there can be minus thirty degrees or something like that. Very, very cold. So if you're kind of going 
between these levels, these sort of levels of temperature in the air, you might notice that the uh, water vapor, the smoke coming from the smokestack, it rises, but then it flattens at the top. It's almost like it reaches an invisible wall or an invisible barrier, and it gets flat. It doesn't continue to kind of go up in that nice wispy way that smoke does. It seems to kind of hit this wall. And as you would imagine, when something hits a wall, if it's water or something more solid, it would flatten because it can't push back that layer. So that means that the air above is too warm to let the moisture rise. So you have warmer air sitting on top of cooler air. And what does that mean? Well, this implies that you're in for clear skies. So up there where the colder air might form water vapor, which might form clouds, which might form rain. Well, no, you don't have that problem. This implies, this gives you the idea, this shows you in some kind of way, maybe not all the time again, but this gives you a very strong indication that you're in for clear skies, that clear skies are in the future. That is the forecast. That is what you can expect. Right. And again, to imply means it just means something, but、uh, maybe not as firmly as meaning something. So I could say, for example, hey, I saw Saw you walking on the street the other day with a beautiful girl, you know. And what are you implying? What do you mean by saying that? Are you suggesting that I'm having an affair with another woman or something like that? Yeah. What do you mean? What are you implying?、Mm. But in this particular case, it、uh, well might mean that you're in for clear skies. It may indicate that you're going to have clear skies and that you can plan to go out to the beach or whatever and not worry if it's going to rain. Okay. That brings us to the end of the second part of our lesson for today. Let's now listen to the third part. While you can obtain a more comprehensive understanding of weather conditions through weather forecasts, isn't it also intriguing to learn more about them by observing the phenomena around you? Perhaps you can discover even more by keeping an eye on other aspects of everyday life. The third part introduces comprehensive. It is a descriptive word, meaning comprehensive, comprehensive, or comprehensive. For example, the insurance plan offers comprehensive health care coverage. This 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 insurance plan offers comprehensive health care coverage. 表示关注点点点，或是留意点点点。举例来说 ，Sarah's coach advised her to keep an eye on her competitors in order to recognize her own advantages and disadvantages. Sarah 的教练建议她留意她的竞争对手，以认清自己的优势和劣势。再看一个例子 ，Would you please keep an eye on my stuff while I use the bathroom? 你能不能在我上洗手间时帮我注意我的东西？ Okay, the third part begins by saying, "While you can obtain a more comprehensive understanding of weather conditions through weather forecasts, isn't it also intriguing to learn more about them by observing the phenomena around you?" It is true that you can obtain or get. A more comprehensive weather forecast by listening to the weatherman or the weatherwoman or whatever, or just getting the indication on your smartphone. Yeah, you can obtain something. You can get something. For example, if you want to obtain some information, you might go to the library and study, or go online and do some research. You could obtain some information about the real estate market or something. You want to buy a new house or invest in the real estate market. You want to obtain some information and comprehensive. Comprehensive just means it gives you a lot of information that will help you understand something. It will help you comprehend something.、It、gives you all the full details. Well, of course, you can get that. Of course, yes, by watching a weather report, by reading about the weather on your phone, and of course, that's the place we would go to get the best, the most comprehensive weather forecasts. 
A forecast is basically a prediction. This is what we expect to happen. This is what science tells us generally does happen. If you're talking about an economic forecast, you might be talking to some kind of business expert, some stock market specialist who is telling you what stocks will go up depending on what's going on in the markets, things like that. They're not always right, but it is very good to listen to people with this knowledge. Their forecasts generally are quite accurate, but it can also be as it says, isn't it also intriguing to learn more about them by observing the phenomena around you? You can kind of feel like a farmer from days gone by or a, a sailor out there on a boat using the indications from nature, not using a lot of science, not using a lot of technology, just using good common sense, good wisdom, good experience. And this is kind of intriguing. It's kind of interesting in a way that kind of causes us to go, hmm, that's interesting. I'd like to know more. I find that kind of stimulating for my mind. It might not change my life. It might not get me a new job or make me the most successful person in the world, but it's just kind of interesting to know. It's the kind of thing that would really maybe make your brain go, I like that. I want to learn more. And you kind of like the idea that you have this ability to observe the phenomena around you and make your own weather forecasts. Well, perhaps you can discover even more by keeping an eye on other aspects of everyday life. Yeah, you can definitely notice things by keeping an eye on things, by sort of paying attention to things. If you keep an eye on stuff, you're paying attention to things, to other aspects of daily life or everyday life, other parts of daily life. I mean, one of these ones that I've noticed is often in the summer, if I go out on a Taiwanese summer day and it's really, really hot, but really, really dry, I often predict that a day or two from now, a typhoon or a big storm might come. Because it's almost like the typhoons out there in the ocean, it's sucking in all that moisture, all that humidity, and it means it's going to come back with a vengeance in a couple of days. I'm not a farmer, but I've just kind of noticed this stuff. Okay, we're at the end of our explanation for today. It's time now to listen to Henny. Two surprising ways to predict the weather. 好，那我们看到文章里面有五个空格，要填入这些空格哦。那现在就来看看五个题目。第一个题目是 ，When airplanes fly, they sometimes leave behind a trail of 空格 clouds called contrails. 当飞机飞行时，有时会留下一条称为凝结尾的。空格云机，那这里考我们智慧。选项 A visual， 它是形容视觉的、视力的。B artificial 是人造的、人工的。C physical， 它表示实物的、实体的，或者是可以表达身体的、物理的、物理学的。那么 D eternal， 它表示永恒的、永远的。从语义上来看，最适合答案就是 B artificial， 用来描述飞机飞行时会留下一条人造云机、人造的这个。那它其他。选项的形容词语义都不符合哦。那看到第二题是空格逗号 ，When a plane leaves no contrails or the contrails quickly fade, the atmosphere contains low levels of moisture and good weather is likely ahead. 好，他说空格逗号，飞机没有留下凝结尾或者是凝结尾很快就消失时，表示大气中的水汽含量较低，好天气很可能即将到来。那这题考我们副词片语，选项 A as a result 是因此 ，B for example 举例来说 ，C in general。一般来说 ，D that is， 换句话说，也就是说，那空格前一句有提到飞机飞行时有时会产生凝结尾，那这题空格后方则提到飞机没有留下凝结尾或者凝结尾很快就消失时，表示大气中的水汽含量较低，好天气很可能即将到来。可以推断空格里面应该要填入的副词片语是用来衔接后面要说明凝结尾跟天气之间关联的叙述，所以最适合答案会是 C in general。一般来说，那其他三个选项，我们讲到因此啊，举例来说，或换句话说，在这边语义都不符合，所以不能选哦。第三题是 ，In contrast, when contrails remain in the sky for a long time, that suggests the 
空格 of lots of moisture and that cloudy weather may be coming. 相反的，当凝结尾在空中停留很长一段时间，这表示空格大量的水汽，多云天气可能要来临了。这边考我们智慧，来看选项 A. Substance 是物质、物品或材料。B. Resistance 是阻抗、抵抗或阻力。C. Maintenance 它表示维护、保养或者是保持。D. Presence 表示存在。出现。那课文前一句提到没有凝结尾或凝结尾很快消失时，表示大气中的水汽含量较低。所以这个题目句子应该是要表达，当凝结尾在空中停留很长一段时间，这表示有大量水汽，存在了大量的水汽。所以最符合语义的答案会是 D presence。第四题 ，water vapor from smoke stacks。空格，烟囱的水蒸气。空格，那这题是来考我们词组。来看选项 A， acts in similar ways， 表示运作的方式类似。B， reacts with other gases， 表示和其他的气体产生反应。C， forms in different shapes， 形成不同的形状。D， freezes at high altitudes， 在高海拔处结冻。那课文前一段说明了如何从飞机的凝结尾来判断天气。那如果我们偷看空格后面的句子，会发现它是在说明如何从烟囱的水蒸气来判断天气。那可以推断，这个题目句子应该是能用来连接前后段文意的。那最符合语义的答案是 A. Act in similar ways， 表示烟囱的水蒸气运作的方式类似。好，那么看到第五题，他说。When it rises and continues rising, it indicates high humidity and that clouds. 空格，当它升起并且持续上升，则表示湿度高且云。空格。那这题是来考我们时态，四个选项都是 form 的动词变化，分别是 A form, B will form, C have formed, D have been formed。那题目前半句是时间副词子句 ，when it rises and continues rising。那接着又提到这个现象代表湿度高。It indicates high humidity. 那这部分是在描述事实，所以时态是用现在简单式。那空格所在的部分，接着又说明了云的状态。它所描述的是预测未来可能发生的情况。那应该用未来式表达说云将会形成。所以这题答案要选 B. Will form. 好，那么以上就是今天讲解。我们回顾简单字吧。Access. The access to the main building is restricted after office hours. Anticipate. As a project manager, Dolores has to anticipate potential challenges and plan accordingly. Indication. Last month's sudden increase in book sales is an indication that the author's popularity has surged. Humidity. The high humidity levels made the air feel thick and sticky. Imply. Ms. Hill's raised eyebrow seemed to imply doubt about Toby's excuse for not doing the homework. Obtain. Marcia is worried that she'll be unable to obtain a passport in time for her trip. Forecast. According to the weather forecast, tomorrow should be a sunny day. Aspect. Regular exercise is just one aspect of the health plan my doctor provided. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Mike. I am Roger. See you next time. time.